What's going on y'all? It's Gerald bringing you another Call of Duty video. In today's video we're going to be reviewing Call of Duty World War II in depth. And I know I said I didn't really like this game, but with BO4 just around the corner, I figured let's give this game a chance and dive deep in what to our Activision and Sledgehammer decided to give us for the year 2017-2018 Call of Duty season. Now this review is strictly going to be about the multiplayer mode, so since I don't even play campaign nor do I even touch the zombies. But in my opinion, I thought World War II was a decent game. I mean, it wasn't the best Call of Duty game, but it had high enough replayability to keep me coming back for more. So let's start with the menu system. At first when the game launched, I was a bit confused on how to use it. I guess coming from Infinite Warfare, where the menu system was pretty straightforward, World War II to me seemed like it was a bit all over the place. But once I got used to it, and knowing I could just press R2 to open up supply drops instead of going into the headquarters, it got a little bit easier to navigate. One very unique thing that World War II did was the introduction of the Operation Officer and Orders. So basically these were challenges that you can individually choose. And uh, depending on the challenge, a reward is given to you if completed in this specific time. The rewards can be armory credits, supply drops, or even different gun variants. This definitely made the replayability much higher for the game. Uh, World War II decided to go with divisions, and the simple pick 10 system was pretty much nowhere to be found. When the game first launched, certain simple items like a suppressor could not be attached to your gun without using the airborne division. But they did do an update to, uh, to the game to where now you can attach a suppressor to any SMG uh, and use any division, but still, you cannot use any gun uh, with a suppressor. So, for example, if you like to use an, uh, an LMG and you want to uh, put a suppressor on it, you can't do that. One of the most annoying divisions is the cavalry division in my opinion where you can carry a riot shield and it pretty much makes you invincible. Unless you get shot in the foot, uh, you I mean you can pretty much crouch walk to an enemy and beat them to death with your riot shield. It's pretty cheap. As of doing this review there are eight different divisions. The infantry, airborne, the armored mountain, expeditionary, resistance, cavalry, and the commando division. And uh, each division has four unique skill sets that set each division apart from each other. So, like, for example, the infantry division has a skill set to where you can have four primary attachments to your gun. The mountain division literally has ghosts built into its division, along with silent movement. So, I mean, to me, this is all cool, but damn, Sledgehammer, what was wrong with the whole Pick 10 system? If it ain't broke, I mean, why fix it? World War II had a vast variety of weapons as well, too. Let's talk about the guns and and the weapons and uh, so it did have a vast variety of weapons and weapon variants like I said that made the game replayability high. World War II also gave us the opportunity to earn weapon variants through challenges something that was also implemented into Infinite Warfare. Uh, uh, the weapon balance it seemed to be on point although I give SMGs a slight edge over every other gun due to the hit fire spread in World War II just being absolutely ridiculous I mean you can literally map someone if you have steady aim on and uh, come on man snipers and shotguns it seems to be a little bit op in this game and it seems that quick scoping is back in full force along with the introduction of incendiary shells for shotguns basically you know getting killed and being set on fire by one of these guns it, it makes me want to throw my controller like straight at the wall man the score streaks were a bit meh i mean if you ask me when the game first came out but now you can control what looks like the chopper gunner from Modern Warfare 2 in the new update, so some of the, war some of the score streaks have gotten a little bit of a buff. The maps in the game, uh, to me, I, I mean, you either loved them or hated them, and there are only 9 maps at launch, but now it has gone up to 23 if you have the DLC content downloaded. The gameplay is much improved from when the game first launched. With the addition of a limited sprint, the game now seems to be a bit more fast-paced, and... Overall, to me, World War II, it had a lot of replayability. It personally wasn't my cup of tea, but being the Call of Duty fanboy that I am, I still played it despite all of the shotgunners, the S-mine users, the riot shield users in this game, and, you know, all the quick scopers and the uh, incendiary shell users. I still played the game because I'm just a Call of Duty fanboy. So let me know in the comment section below. Did you like World War II, or are you looking forward to something new and fresh with BO4 just around the corner? On a side note, Black Ops 4 needs to hurry up and release, and I find myself not knowing what kind of content to put out for you guys, and really just looking forward to a new year of Call of Duty. So that's going to do it for today's video. If you liked the video, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It would really help out the channel. 
hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bells if you are new for all of the latest in Call of Duty news and just Call of Duty in general. My name is Gerald and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Recon airborne, searching for targets. Fritz X bomb mission underway. Recon airborne. We carried the day.